obviously you consider yourself a champion already, but do you look at this fight as any different than any of your others? Or is it just, hey, I can go in there, I win and I continue my momentum? I just prepare myself like in every fight. I prepare myself for a difficult fight. I'm ready and prepared to, to be victorious on February 17th. So I don't see any difference, to be honest. It's like a normal opponent I, I got on my way. Obviously, you consider yourself to be the better fighter than Alex, but in what area do you think you will show how much better you are than him? Everywhere. I'm better than him everywhere. Do you think, maybe outside of yourself, he's the greatest featherweight of all time? Obviously, there's Jose Aldo, there's Max Holden. Oh, yeah, he's going to stay in the featherweight book for, for a while. That's for sure. He, he will be remembered as one of the greatest in the, in the featherweight division. He, he was a great champion. Yeah. He's obviously heard some of the things you've been saying and he saw your Instagram bio and he wants you to go and personally change it should you lose this Saturday. Do you think he's taking your words a little bit too seriously? Do you think he's using them to motivate himself? What do you make of his reaction to what you're saying? To be honest, what I do in my Instagram bio, that's my thing. I don't know why he's looking to my Instagram, to be honest. I never saw his Instagram. Never. If I saw something about him, it was because the people around me send, send me. Not because I, I go to his Instagram and I want him to change something personally and this and that. How do you see this fight playing out on Saturday? How do you win the fight? I see myself knock him, him out in the first round. Yeah. Um, if you win this fight, I think you'd be the 11th male to win a UFC title with an undefeated record, uh, which is obviously a huge accomplishment. When you think about, you know, being undefeated and getting here, is that something you put a lot of pressure on yourself? And I guess what would it mean for you to join that group of very small people who have been undefeated UFC champions? Not at all, to be honest. I don't care about that. Mm. I just accept everything that comes to my way. That's it. If I had to be undefeated to this long, I'm grateful about that fact. If not, I'm never going to lose the trust in myself. How much do you think your life is going to change if you win this? Uh, people are talking a lot about how popular you are in you know, Spain and these places in Europe. Uh, to what be do you honest, think it's I don't be like? care about that kind of things. You know, I, ju I just want to be happy. Which I am, I'm, I'm already very happy with my life, with everything I got. So any result gonna change my life. I'm a happy man and I will keep as a happy man after this Saturday night too. And uh, you know the comments you made about not wanting to give a title shot to some of these other contenders. It seems like it's made you know, Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega very upset. They've done some interviews um, saying you know, that they really wanna fight you. Do you think because those fights are now bigger and there'll be more tension, would you consider it? Who or? doesn't want to fight me right now? Who not? Who? I didn't become a UFC world champion yet. I have three more days to do it. They are really calling me out. Everyone. Everyone. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because they want to fight you. Yeah. And they're a big deal. Yeah. Red Panty Knights. Over here, if all goes well for you on Saturday night, how do you envision your reign as UFC champion? What did you say? If all goes well for you on Saturday night, how do you envision your reign as a UFC champion? As one of the greatest, as one of the greatest in the featherweight division, and they're gonna remember me too, as they're gonna remember Jose Aldo in the division, Conor McGregor to Alexander Wolkanowski. I'm gonna put myself in that book. And obviously, you represent Spain and Georgia. There's a big Georgian connection specifically on this card with Marab Duvalishvili. So what have you been able to talk to Marab leading up into this fight week? And how are you guys feeling going into this one? We just plan to show up on February 17 and get what's ours, right? The victory. Yeah, algunas en español rapidito. Mencionaste tu deseo para pelear en Santiago Bernabéu. Si era tu decisión, ¿contra quién quisieras pelear en Santiago Bernabéu? Si fuera mi decisión, pelearía con Conor McGregor. Esa sería la pelea la que yo apunto y la que apuntaría. 
this is for for everybody. Yeah. Just just a question that was asked. Uh, would you mention the intention of actually fighting in the Santiago Bernabeu's or Almadou Stadium? Who would fight? Would you fight there? And I think I would put Conor McGregor. That's the fight that I would make at the Santiago Bernabeu. ¿Y cuál es tu mensaje para todos sus aficionados de Latinoamérica? And a message to all the fans in Latin America. El mensaje es simple, siempre de agradecimiento. Agradezco mucho por por el apoyo que me están dando y que confíen en ellos mismos, ¿sabes? Que habrá muchísimas personas alrededor de ellas que le dirán que no pueden hacerlo. Dudarán siempre de ti, pero al único que necesitas para conseguir cualquier cosa en esta vida es a ti mismo, confía en ti mismo, trabaja y, y todo, todo lo que te puedas imaginar es posible. The message is one of uh, gratitude and thank, being thankful. I mean, well, thanks for all the support and all the faith you have in me. And the message I would have for them is to trust yourselves uh, and surround yourself with people that, that trust you as well. It, people it, people around you might say they don't trust you. They, they think you can't do it. But the only thing, the only person that you need to trust and to get things done is yourself and keep doing it. Cecilia. A ti. We were uh, we were supposed to see you in Anaheim a couple of years ago, and unfortunately, you weren't able to fight. Uh, I'm curious, how have you changed as a fighter in the last two years, and what did you kind of learn from that experience that you were not able to fight here? Mm, I learned a lot since that moment. I had a weight cut issue. This time, I had the best weight cut I ever had in my life. So I have improved a lot in every aspect of my life as a professional, as a person. So, yeah. And what does it mean to be able to return to this particular venue where you couldn't fight to? It, fight it means fight? a lot because of the, the last bad experience I had here. And now I have the chance to fight for a title and become a UFC world champion here in Anaheim. It, it makes me feel really grateful. Muy buenas, Silvia. Eh, bueno, ha llegado el momento más importante de la historia de la CMMA. En España quería saber qué responsabilidad sientes. Sabes que vas a paralizar el país, va a haber muchísima gente que nunca ha visto un combate eh, mirando tu pelea contra Volkanovski. ¿Qué, ¿Qué opinas de ello? ¿Qué responsabilidad tienes de ello? And this has the moment has arrived of the greatest the greatest moment in the history of MMA in Spain. It is such a great responsibility. There are people that are going to the country is going to be stopping. People that haven't watched the fight are going to stop to watch you. What do you think about that? Sinceramente la misma responsabilidad que he llevado hasta ahora, ¿sabes? Nada cambia. Hasta ahora también he tenido la misma responsabilidad para llegar hasta este punto de que el país se paralice para, para ver mi combate, ¿no? Entonces, si te soy honesto, no me pongo extra presiones. Yo solo estoy concentrado en lo mío. Agradezco por el, por el hecho de que mis movimientos estén caus, causando este tipo de impacto, pero no me puedo poner presiones externas, ¿sabes? The same level of responsibility they have approached every single fight coming up to this. The, 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 the level of responsibility and work that I've put in to actually get to the moment of now being this moment that everybody's watching my fight. I do uh, thank everyone for the, uh, um, for, for, for the support and being there, but uh, I, I don't put that pressure on myself thinking of such an important moment. Decías de centrarte en lo tuyo, Ilia. Eso pasa por el recorte de peso. Entonces, quería saber que nos actualizaras un poco en estos momentos. ¿Cómo lo llevas? El ¿A cuánto mejor estás? recorte de peso que he tenido hasta la fecha puedo dar el peso esta noche. Ya estoy perfecto a, a nada del, del peso que tengo que dar el, el viernes. Me veo perfectamente bien. Hemos hecho un trabajo fenomenal. Y lo que te digo, siempre lo he mencionado, no ha sido el... el training camp más duro que haya tenido hasta la fecha porque todos los que he tenido la verdad han sido durísimos pero sin lugar a duda la más profesional haya, eh, que haya tenido hasta la fecha de hecho esta mañana estaba hablando con el equipo y con Josh me, me preparé de una forma fenomenal pero comparando el campamento que tuve a esta es un amateur a profesional the road to glory actually goes through um, your weight cut. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? And, you know, it has been 
the best weight cut I've had in my life. I could actually go in towards the scale today and I, tonight and I, and, and I make weight. Um, I, this is not, uh, I, I actually commented with the team and how well this has gone, uh, an amazing weight cut. This has not been the hardest camp I've had. Um, I've had harder uh, camps such as the one with Josh Emmett. I mean, that was something that I prepared so hard for, but I was talking to the team today that, um, uh, it, the way I prepared for Rod Hashem, as far as like the the um, the weight cut and the way the things are going, it's almost like amateur compared to professional. What's going on right now? Dormas, eh, Ilya, quería saber si crees que la estrategia de Volkanovski eh, va a pasar por la lucha. De hecho, he escuchado muchos análisis, especialmente desde Estados Unidos, en el cual daban como que el wrestling de Volkanovski podía ser muy superior al tuyo, al menos que se podría imponer en este combate. Entonces, quería saber un poco qué opinabas de la lucha de Volkanovski, si crees que va a ser esa la estrategia, que, que, que vaya a empujarte hacia la lucha y hacia el bloqueo dentro del combate. A ver, siempre, cada vez que me he enfrentado a mis oponentes en el pasado, siempre decían que eran mejor que yo en el suelo, en el wrestling o de pie. Esto nunca va a cambiar, ¿sabes? A la gente siempre le va a quedar la duda. Pero sobre su estrategia, su estrategia va a ser mmm, patearme, obviamente, porque es donde él me habrá visto huecos de patearme, moverse en círculo, combinarlo con las manos, luego las manos con, con las patadas, hacer trabajo de wrestling, intentar ponerme contra la jaula, desgastarme, intentar aprovechar la ventaja de que él tiene la experiencia y tiene el cardio para los cinco asaltos. Pero es que eso es lo único que tiene, ¿sabes? Es, no tiene nada más que tiene. Eh, poder de knockout no tiene. Es un peleador que pega en volumen. Poder de sumisión no tiene. Porque no es un peleador finalizador. Lo único que tiene es corro, corro, te pateo. A ver, es, eh, lo, lo hace bien, lo combina todo súper bien. Lo ha ido demostrando a lo largo de, de, de su camino. Pero yo no soy ni Korean Zombie. No soy el trapo ni de Jair, no soy ni el paquete de Brian Ortega, no soy ni, ni la nariz torcida de Max Holloway, soy Ilia Topuria y lo voy a machacar en el primer asalto de una forma espectacular y al que le quepa la, la mínima duda que se joda. <coughs> So, uh, the world, a lot of people talk about the strategy and the fact that the wrestling, a lot of analysis is talking about the wrestling being the key for him to, to, to beat you. What do you think about that? Well, the doubt's always going to be there. Every, every single fight I've had, they've always said the same thing. There's always somebody saying something that someone is better than I am in that. And I'll tell you about this. This, the, 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 the just think of all the, the advantage that he has as a fighter. Okay. He does, I know what he's going to bring to the table because that's what he always brings. So he's going to try to kick me. As we know, he's got strong kicks. He's going to try to move around me. Uh, he's going to tr try to put some hands in there and some combos. And after the kicks, come in with, uh, a, a, with some hand work and try to some, put some combos in. Try to pressure me to go against the fence and I, I understand some cage work as well but that's all he's got and he's done very well uh, we've seen it all throughout his uh, journey in the UFC but that's all he has um, it, it I it, there's so much more for me to offer and it, it, it I've always heard these things people have always said I'm better than you on, on the ground I'm better than you in wrestling I'm better you in striking and that does not come to fruition he needs to understand one thing that he hasn't seen me he hasn't seen and a lot a lot of other fighters by name here that were mentioned um i am not any of these fighters that he's faced before um i am not any of the, the guys that he's faced that, that he's that he's won um uh, i'm Ilya Taporia, and i'm gonna do something to him and i'm 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 gonna finish him off and he's also a, i understand that he doesn't have knockout power um i have knockout power um he goes on volume um that's how he wins his fights he's not a finisher he doesn't when he when he, the fight goes to the ground he's not known for finishing so i'm a different breed and i'm gonna beat him up and if listen if he doesn't believe it if that's not what he thinks you know and whoever thinks the contrary screw them Ilia, por aquí buenas tardes Mencionaste tú mismo aquí que mencionaste que el campamento este era diferente al DM en tu pelea de, de junio, que este había sido muy profesional y aquel campamento era amateur cuando los comparaba. ¿Por qué? qué? ¿Qué hiciste? ¿Hiciste algo nuevo? ¿En qué cambió? ¿Cómo fue? Primero, ante nada, la alimentación. Farm to the table. Eso fue lo primero que hicimos. Cambiamos toda la alimentación porque ya sabes que los seres humanos tenemos a veces hábitos malos por desconocimiento. 
por lo que en este campamento hemos aplicado muchos cambios después de la forma que hemos preparado y hemos analizado el combate, lo, el tiempo que hemos invertido en la recuperación para cada entrenamiento, el tiempo que hemos ahorrado en viajes que antes... Es, es que son muchos detalles, ¿sabes? Que, que hemos cambiado así, ponerme a explicarlo en cinco minutos cuesta, pero te podría dar un, una charla entera de todos los cambios que hemos hecho. Um, you mentioned that this camp compares to the one that you had against Josh Emmett in, in, in certain aspects. It was professional compared to amateur. Can you elaborate on that? Um, first thing was nutrition. I mean, uh, you talk about farm to table. We're talking about uh, looking at the, you know, and studying things. And it's something that we don't know as human beings. We don't have the knowledge for this. So, you know, just get prof got, get along with with professionals. It's, it's time for recovery and time to the day. Uh, it's very important for us to do that. Uh, uh, time to recover from training also as well um, another thing that the time in, in, in trips that we would take that would waste time I mean, is so many different aspects so many different elements that I would have I have time to talk for hours about this so I can't um, go into detail but there's so many small details that go into it that it, it would be, wouldn't be unfair to do it in five minutes y una última por aquí viniste hablando español pero todos sabemos también que eres georgiano tierra de guerreros el Cáucaso serías el primer campeón español pero a la misma vez primer campeón georgiano, en tu núcleo familiar, tu padre, tu hermano, tu familia, el ser campeón georgiano del Cáucaso, ustedes que son tan unidos, tan, tan apegados, ¿qué significaría para ti? Significaría mucho para mí, significaría representar el verdadero valor de mi familia, ¿no? el trabajo que han invertido mis padres, el que he invertido yo, que al final va a tener su, su recompensa, ¿no? Va a ser algo súper grande para mí, para mi familia, para mis países, como has mencionado, para Georgia, para España. Es un momento maravilloso. La verdad que me, me estaban preguntando de que si estaba nervioso. Es que no puedo estarlo. Yo visualicé, yo le pedí a Dios vivir todos estos momentos. Ahora lo único que me queda es disfrutar de lo que yo mismo pedí, yo mismo manifesté todo esto. Entonces, soy un hombre feliz de poder vi vivir mis sueños con los ojos abiertos, de tener a toda mi familia, que de hecho van a llegar ahora en un par de horas, es la primera vez que voy a tener a toda mi familia viendo mi combate. Entonces, son, son momentos únicos en, en la vida, ¿no? que solamente uno las puede obtener con trabajo súper duro, estos son momentos que nadie te los regala, así que estoy súper, súper agradecido de poder disfrutar de tantos detalles, tantos momentos mágicos junto a toda mi gente. Um, you talk about, we've heard you speak English, we've heard you speak Spanish, we also represent Georgia. What would it mean for you to be a champion? Not just a champion for, for Spain, but a champion for Georgia. What, how does it feel to actually have your family around you? What do they feel about this? It would be an amazing moment. It would be magical. It would be just for them to, to, to be around me, to, to actually represent, the, represent both countries. It would mean a lot to me. Um, these are moments that I, I can't talk about being you know nervous about this moment, about the pressures. Like I can't afford to to be like that i can't because i manifested this i visualized this i wanted this i've asked god to give me the opportunity i have i'm lucky to dream with my eyes open and to actually to live this every day these are magical moments and to have everyone to have the team to everybody here all my family they're for, for the first time everybody's going to be here watching my fight they're arriving in a couple of hours so um it's just these are moments that you have to enjoy because you know they are earned not given and uh, they're very special to me eh, Ilia, hablabas de, hablabas de lo especial que era para ti poder pelear en Anaheim, donde tuviste ese problema hace dos años. Eh, lo hablabas en inglés también para que quede esa constancia en castellano. ¿Crees que también es una manera de volver a donde se produjo un gran, un gran cambio? Porque has dicho que es tu mejor vez en el peso, pero ¿crees que este punto hubiese llegado sin lo que sucedió en 2021? Para nada. Por, por ello mismo, cuando me sucedió... Lo acepté, ¿sabes? No tuve ningún momento de depresión, de haberlo pasado mal. Siempre, cada vez que me ha pasado algo negativo en mi vida, siempre supe que no hay mal que por bien no venga, ¿no? Entonces, 
esa experiencia me dio un aprendizaje súper grande en, en, en mi vida y ahora el, el poder pelear por el campeonato de, de, del mundo aquí en el mismo sitio donde tuve el problema es como una gran casualidad, ¿no? Y como yo digo, las casualidades no, no existen, es que todo pasa por, por alguna razón, es que después de ese combate que se me haya cancelado me dieron otro combate en, en, en cuatro semanas que fue en contra de Jai Herbert, un knockout que va a quedar en el libro de la UFC por siempre, después todo el camino que tuve después de eso. No sé qué hubiera pasado si al final hubiera podido pelear aquí, ¿no? A lo mejor el camino hubiera sido diferente, por lo que agradezco por todo lo que me pasa en, en, en esta vida y solamente acepto y sigo mi camino y nunca olvido quién soy cada vez que me miro en el espejo. I'm um, going to talk about the experience of actually fighting here after having kind of follow up to, to the, uh, the, the question about having, you know, not being able to fight Anaheim and fighting it now. And just, yeah, it, it's been amazing. If you think about this, uh, uh, the th I, I, when it happened to me, I just accepted, I took it as it is. Um, I took it and I went with, I ran with it and I do not believe there's any evil that doesn't, that, that does not generate some good coming out of it. Um, from that day, Uh, they were able to fight a fight for me in four weeks. That was against Jai Herbert. I had a knockout that's going to be in the books of the UFC for quite some time. And after that, look at the um, uh, the journey I've had that has led me to this moment here. Um, as it turns out, being here fighting for a title is a uh, one great coincidence, but I do not believe in coincidences. So um, it, it's been really special. And I don't know what would have happened if I actually fought in Anaheim back in the day. Uh, what I do believe is I have a just great opportunity now and it's been an amazing experience and to have been fortunate to fight here. Thank you very much to everyone. Wow.